Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, we're going to talk about the Dual Fish Eye plugin once again. I have made several videos about this amazing plugin, but in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips and tricks for you to make the most of the plugins. So follow me, let's get started. Actually, the Dual Fish Eye plugins was first developed by Yoshi Hirota to capture the unstitched Dual Fish Eye images in auto bracket mode on the Theta V. On the Z1, we can even capture the bracket draw images. So with the auto bracket shooting, uh, you can shoot and merge into a high quality dynamic range photos. And here is the workflow. In this example, I have shot with the Theta V with two fisheye plugins, uh, auto bracket shooting mode from plus four to minus four altogether nine JPEG photos. As you can see, I have choose seven of them to make the image stacking because I think I don't have to use all of them and remember to click on the chromatic aberration removal and deghosting. I don't want to do any alignment because I was shooting on a tripod. As you can see, I have uh, played with uh, your HDR sliders and uh, constantly uh, click before and after comparison to make sure that I make everything well and I have improved imaging quality just as what I want. And you can see uh, I have the export to the TIFF file and then in the PDG Pro 12 bit 3 I can stitch with the stitch template built right in the PDG software and make the perfect stitch and for the Theta V the, there's no uh, recall stitcher for Theta V but we can use the PDG Pro bit 3 to stitch the result with just one click and the result is nearly perfect and that is a workflow on auto bracket shooting it's also work on the Ricoh Theta Z1 Another great feature about dual fish eye plugins is the burst mode. The burst mode could really help you capture a sequence of photos with uh, exactly the same exposure values with only one click of the shutter button. So that is very convenient for the photographers to create high quality images. And for the Theta V, we can do image stacking in Photoshop and I will show you later on. And for the Theta Z1, we have the TNG burst mode which we can utilize the very good stacking software Canon RAW Plus to increase the imaging quality dramatically. Here I show you a burst of JPEG shot from CTV with the dual fisheye plugin burst mode. And on the Adobe Bridge, I import these images as individual layers in, uh, in Adobe Photoshop. And I convert a set of imaging layers into a smart object so that in the layer options, I can apply the mean stack algorithm to the, the photo sequence. As you can see, I intentionally slow down the video for you. And uh, after you apply the mean stacking, which means that the Photoshop will do the stack for you on the image sequences. And you can see the before and after comparison, the imaging quality improves a lot. And then you can call the Adobe Camera Raw filter to apply to the individual layers to make your image, to, to do some color correction, to make your image looks better. And you save as the TIFF format and stitch in the PDG Pro 12 bit 3. I have an individual stitching template and I will share with you in my video description. And after that, you will get a high quality panorama from CDV with the JPEG image stacking and Photoshop. Unlike the Cedar V, the Cedar Z1 could capture DNG format. So in the burst mode, we can capture a series of DNG shots. Now we can stack the imaging sequence in DNG format in the Kendall Raw Plus, which is a very great stacking software with deghosting. And we will have a 16-bit DNG profile. And we color correct in the Adobe Camera Raw on that high-quality raw file, and we get a high-quality TIFF output. And we stitch the output the, the TIFF file in the PDG Pro 12 bit 3 and we will have an excellent result straight out from the PDG. And you can also use the Ricoh Cedar Stitcher to do the stitching for you. The HDR DNG mode for the two fish eye plugin on the Cedar Z1 is another great feature. In this mode, Cedar Z1 will automatically stack and merge the auto bracket DNG sequences and create 16-bit HDR DNG file. Here you can see an example of a 16-bit HDR DNG shot capturing a car during the coronavirus period. And you can see I import this HDR DNG file in Lightroom and do some color correction 
and uh, directly stitch in a Ricoh Cedar stitcher. And the Ricoh Cedar stitcher will have very high quality stitch result. And it can also correct your pitch and roll for us. So after you have uh, satisfied with the result, you click on OK and you will get the high quality panorama straight out from the 16-bit HDR DNG file with the help of Adobe Photoshop Lightroom and Cita Stitcher. I bet some of you have seen my previous video about the mobile HDR DNG workflow. In that video, I have shown you uh, my workflow of creating high quality HDR images only with Cita Z1 and your phone. And for the mobile HDR DNG workflow, the apps you need are the Cita Z1 Stitcher, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Mobile, the Gallery app, and the Touch Retouch if you want to make an your patch. And on the mobile DNG workflow, uh, you cannot copy and paste the HDR DNG from the Wi-Fi. So you have to use an OTG cable to connect Cita Z1 and your Android phone. Then you can copy and paste the HDR DNG directly from your Cita Z1 to the Android phone internal storage. And after that, you can do everything you like, uh, just like the desktop workflow, such as import to your Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, some color correction, and also uh, export as TIFF, and then stitch in the stitcher on the mobile platform. One thing I have to say is that on the mobile platform, the stitcher will be the Cita Z1 stitcher. The developer is also Yoshi Hirota. And if you want to make a nadir patch, to patch the tripod, to patch the shadow of your camera, you can use the touch retouch to patch the nadir with interactive 360 view. You will get a perfect 360 panorama without photographer, without camera, without your selfie stick, all done in your cell phone. The reason why we choose to save an official EV0 12-bit official DNG file is that we want to take advantage of the Ricoh Cita Stitcher on the Lightroom. And the, and the Ricoh Cita Stitcher does not accept any third-party DNG photos. But uh, if you make a combination of the 16-bit HDR DNG and the 12-bit official DNG, you can create a workaround or workflow in between the, the true HDR DNG workflow and the auto bracket mode. Because the out-breaking mode workflow is uh, a little bit slower and uh, a little bit complicated for some of the photographers. While the HDR DNG mode uh, does not allow you to shoot moving objects, uh, you have to keep your camera solid stable. A workaround solution is to, to combine the 12-bit EV0 DNG file and the 16-bit DNG files to make a workaround to make this dual fisheye plugin uh, works really well in the moving situation. So here's a workflow. In this situation, I was shooting a HDR DNG shot in a moving car with moving cars outside the window. So you can see in the purple areas, that is a failure of the HDR merging in camera because they cannot cope with the moving object. And uh, I have imported the 16-bit and the 12-bit DNG file in the Adobe Camera Raw to make some color corrections and to make these two images look exactly the same. As you can see, also on the pure color on the top of the car, you can see some artifacts in during HDR merging. And then I open the two DNG files straight out in Adobe Photoshop and put these two files uh, in a single PSD project. I can recover the, the merging artifacts and something uh, on the top, you can see the, the color, the variations on the top, you can see some artifacts. So I can recover any artifacts from the 12-bit DNG files. So that is a combination of the 16-bit HDR DNG file and the official 12 DNG file. And I can recover any detail and get rid of any artifacts with the combination. And after that, I will save as a TIFF file. And uh, then I will import to the Lightroom and to use the Ricoh Cedar Stitcher because we have already captured the official DNG. So we can stitch in the official Rico stitcher and get a perfect stitching result without any artifact while shooting with the HDR DNG mode in a moving situation. So that is the tricky part of the combination, the 16-bit HDR DNG and the 12-bit official DNG.
So that is the five tips and tricks for you to make the most of the dual fisheye plugins on the CETA cameras. I hope this video will help you to create a more stunning panoramas from CETA cameras. If you like it, please thumb up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you in my next video.